The sniping is beginning in the Conservative Party and the appeals for money have already gone out uh, and urgency of the coming general election is already being um, encouraged uh, for people to think about uh, how can how can the Conservative Party recover from this disaster that is uh, emerging even after one day of counting the Conservative Party has already lost over 700 council seats and may well exceed the worst prediction of a thousand seats lost. I think it will exceed that. And I think the Conservative Party needs to uh, recognise it's not Mr. Su M M M M Mr. Sunak who is immediately responsible for this. Uh, of course, he has been in power. He has presided over... Uh, the economy, for example, which is important to Conservatives, uh, both as Chancellor and now as Prime Minister. But I think much of the problem comes down to uh, the obsession with distracting the electorate from the subject of recovery, from the cost of living, from the idea of trying to make good on the Brexit promises, which uh, neither Rishi Sunak nor Liz Truss, remember Liz Truss, uh, nor indeed Theresa May, nor indeed Boris, none of them have managed to make good on the promises of Brexit, whether they wanted Brexit or not. It's a done deal. And uh, all of these prime ministers have failed to deliver any sort of Brexit bonus. I have asked again and again, give me one, <laughs> give me a few, uh, but certainly give me one, Brexit bonus that we can talk about and people will talk about uh, uh, Rhys Mogg will go pie eyed about the uh, Pacific agreement, but that hasn't brought in a reduction in prices in the shop. So what does it mean? It means nothing. It means nothing. It hasn't helped farmers. It hasn't helped fishing, uh, fishing fleets uh, to restore our fishing fleets. Uh, I remember that Brexit was sold very much on the backs of the uh, opportunities for fishing, the opportunities for farming, the opportunities for greater trade. None of these things have actually produced a benefit. Yes, we've had COVID as well. Yes, we've had the Ukraine-Russian war. But we should have seen some small benefit from Brexit, and we haven't. Instead, we have this extraordinary distraction about stopping small boats. That's not something we can do on our own. And I wish, I, I wish that um, uh, the present leadership would recognise that the only way forward with small boats is to convene an international conference and to, and to recognise that we all have this problem, including America. The, if we can thrash out a suitable approach to migration, this will benefit not only the potential migrants, but us as well. We all benefit from new blood in our systems. And we can't be the people who choose who is best to have in our country. That is an absurd situation because often we do not know. The way we have treated students, who often are the best potential new blood that we can possibly get, the way we have treated students since Mrs May took office in the Home Office all those years ago, since she introduced the hostile environment, has been appalling. We have taken them, we've taken foreign students' money and we've thrown them out as fast as possible. In any other situation, this would be called exploitation. And I don't know why People keep coming back because actually our universities are in decline because our school system is in decline because we aren't investing and we don't have the teachers to improve the standards. And it's not up to governments to legislate about standards. It's up to teachers and it's up to students themselves to learn how to learn. And we're not doing that. We might be learning how not to teach, but we aren't learning how to learn. And it seems as if 
we are led by people who do not learn. So we had a look at this book yesterday by Anthony Seldon, which made it quite clear, Boris, after uh, experience after experience, never learnt. Never learnt. It's as if he's never been Foreign Secretary, he's never been Mayor, he's never been Prime Minister, because he doesn't seem to have learnt any of the lessons of handling power at the top of our society. He still seems to behave as an oaf. It's really sad to see. Liz Truss. You know, Liz Truss's interventions in the last couple of weeks, it's as if she doesn't realise she was a disaster on the world stage. She brought our country to the edge of ruin. It's as if she doesn't realise what she's done. At least Quasi Quateng has had the good grace to keep his head down. And as for Theresa May, Theresa May was a disaster in power. And yet she seems to, in fact, she is very good at it. She's very good at standing over the sitting prime minister and hectoring. But again, does she not realise what damage she herself caused by dithering about Brexit? If you're going to do something, do it. If you're not going to do, do something then make that decision too. But don't say you're going to do something and then not do it. And dither and dither and dither and hope people will be completely confused by the amount of paperwork that you put out. People won't be. People will be frustrated. And that's what we've got at the moment. So we've had the real paperwork that matters uh, yesterday. That's, the, that's an election. And it's gone really badly for these people who think bureaucracy is more important than truth. So we now need to move forward. And in order to restore our country, we need to restore our politics. It's not a party political issue. It's about the way we are thinking, because the way we are thinking, I think, has gone dreadfully wrong. So the Labour Party and the Conservative Party need to reflect on what has gone wrong in the last 13 years. It's not just it's not just the Conservative Party, it's the Labour Party too. Uh, it's the SNP party, as we know, and they all share the same problem. A lack of direction and a belief that those people in power can get away with something that people perhaps who are not in political office cannot get away with. One rule for them, another rule for us. Can't be right.